Do you, um, are you are you really more intoxicated, say, with femininity as opposed to androgyny? Because hmm. androgyny is. I never, I never know, I never think about it. But when I see something androgynous, I'm immediately fascinated by it. You know, just maybe ten years ago, a lot of people felt androgyny was really my strong suit. And it's really my background. I'm I'm intellectually interested in androgyny. Yeah. I'm interested in the authors who mostly women who've uh, really put some serious time into thinking about androgyny or the fusion of male-female. Mm -hmm. And my own personal experiences date back to uh, the era when uh, g gender bending was, was interesting and glamorous and a little bit dangerous mm -hmm. if men practiced it. Yeah. And I come from that generation. Okay. Um, femininity is really such a subtle, uh, complex area. Sometimes I don't even know what it is. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think right now that's probably a, a sphere that I'm really exploring. Yeah. And also, a number of people have come forward that I could not have shy maybe seven years ago. Uh, like yourself. Um, some of the women that you say look like supermodels mm -hmm. actually had to get to a level of technical capability that uh, women like that would be fully comfortable. Uh, yeah, comfortable with me photographing them and also feeling rather secure that something good would come out of it. Yeah. Yeah, which has, says a lot about the level of technique I've developed over the years. Your pictures tend to grow on me. I think like when I first saw them, I. I wasn't sure how I felt, but then as as why because you're too safe. <laughs> no, 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 because they're so raw. I, I've heard this before. What what is raw about my work? They're not because they don't seem to chase after a, they don't seem to chase after conventional beauty at all. But they it, seem to. But it doesn't exclude it. I I would say. I and mean, no, it, it doesn't. But I, I would say that. You would focus on things that I think normally someone would not focus on because they're flaws. They're, they're flaws. You know, uh, like like it's like and they're things that normally like a photographer would, would take the effort to hide, and it's like you don't shy away from them. And Such as what the ro robust quality of someone's real or what? Yeah, like I think that's normally something you're not used to seeing. Is for me as a viewer, it's like. And so in that sense, it's raw because it seems more real. Which is kind of going to the next question I was going to ask about when we talked the other night about the difference between people's tolerance for realism versus their tolerance mm. for the other. Um, like, what, what do you, why do you think that is? Like, why do people set, have like a higher tolerance for realism, even if it's ugly? Well, let me qualify that. I, okay. I, I suspect men have a high tolerance for any form of depiction of women particularly straight men. Mm -hmm. um, women, on the other hand, I think have very diversified seri series of reactions to the issue of beauty, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, issue of sensuality, um, the issue of female empowerment. There is a sector of women who don't um, discern or obtain any degree of empowerment from presenting themselves erotically or uh, in the nude. And there are just as many women who feel uh, not so much empowered but enhanced and even um, cherished as a result of that degree of attention being focused on them. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why I'm really reticent to generalize about women because they have such a multitude of reactions to being depicted, mm -hmm. to being uh, rendered in art. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat uncomfortable with uh, a large quantity of people, particularly women, see my work as raw. But I've heard it enough, and they say it as a compliment. I think it is, because I think that, I mean, it's just so, 
I mean, with, with the technolo technological developments in photography, like the, basically, like most photography these days is digital art. Yeah. You know, and so I think that, that now as an audience, we become so accustomed to these images of perfection that more closely resemble, say, like an oil painting than than, than a photograph. It's yeah. shocking. It's actually what's most shocking is that um, to look at a photograph and see a line on someone's face, or to see cellulite on them, or to, to see anything like. You have trouble it's, with that yourself, right? Seeing that when oh, you're, sure. when you're it's captured. It's unfamiliar. It's because it's, it's, I think to a certain degree, within the culture, it's like embarrassing because it's a sign of, like, use. Like, like I use this body. I, it's gotten me around and it's, it's, it's endured some wear and tear over time. See? And I think there's a certain degree of cultural shame in that. Is it, like, I, but that's my story. I mean, that's me as a female. Yeah. But I think just in general, people aren't used to seeing something that is it completely retouched, airbrushed, and, and rendered perfect for consumption in that way. Like where basically kind of all of its realness has been taken away. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I don't have a fetish about realism, but, um, and I do retouch some pictures, but oftentimes, you know, the way I shoot and the avail available light is one kind of retouching because it removes uh, a certain amount of uh, lines, wrinkles, uh, perceived flaws. But I have, my problem with retouching is more um, it has something to do with the sort of era we're living in. Mm -hmm. And also my background as a photography director. I worked so long in the magazine trade and um, I've dealt with so many kinds of pictures, so many different kinds of aesthetics. Um, something about retouching is that it sort of can remove, you know, re retouching at its worst can remove um, all the signs of uh, earned character. Mm -hmm. And when you erase or sort of scrub away all the um, signs of the character of the individual, uh, I have a problem with that because I'm, I'm genuinely interested in these personal identity of each individual. And um, on the other hand, I'm not I'm not so fixated on my own aesthetic that I won't think about the subject's needs. Usually I actually like to think about the subject's needs in their presence. I think about how they like them very carefully.